We're at the final stage of my wardrobe project, sanding. It's a final stage that actually began early on in the process. I have pre-sanded a lot of this cabinet before I've put it together to make things easier. Some of the tools that I use to get into corners, I've got a Lee Nielsen scraper plane and this scraper plane blade is sharpened at 45 degrees. It's got a burr edge and it takes glue out of the corners of 90 degree intersections of parts like inside a drawer, dovetail joints that have been glued. This works pretty good. Another tool that I use is this very old fine sander. I've had this since the mid 90s I guess, early mid 90s. It has a very tight oscillation orbit pattern so you can get in there close to an edge without messing up the edge. So that's a good way also to remove a little bit of glue marks perhaps that you couldn't reach with the Lee Nielsen sander, uh, scraper blade that I've got. You could use a cabinet scraper too as well or a card, card scraper blade. And the lion's share of the work I'm doing now, sanding the drawers is what I'm working on today, is done with this Merca sander. It's a direct current motor, so the AC power is turned to DC power. That means that the motor can be very small, it has a lot of torque, and with the lower profile, it's very comfortable to work inside a cabinet. So I can get in here into the side of this cabinet and sand inside, bottom sides of frames, where I couldn't do that with a, I don't, had a Bosch uh, five inch random orbit sander. It was great. It just couldn't get in places like that. And it was, it was top heavy. So this sander being low profile is, is a sweet treat to use. It's very expensive. No apologies offered on that. It is. But if you've got a great big project like this to sand once in a while or to shape seats or that kind of thing, I like it. I'm using Abernet sand, sanding uh, paper, which is a fiber type paper. And you can see all the holes on here for dust collection. I've got it hooked up to an old fine uh, vacuum. This is the hose that comes if you buy the Merca option of their hose. I bought it because I want to keep this cord, which is pretty heavy. I've got electrical tape about every foot on it to keep it from twisting up. So this hose is dedicated strictly to using this sander. So those are some of the tools uh, that I just want to show you what I use to sand a project like this. Now what I'm going to show you in real time with a pretty fresh piece of 80 grit Abernet, I'm going to show you how well the sander will clean up these dovetail joints. They're probably the end grain Probably only sticks up a 64th here, but I also have chips from the planer and other deformities that, that I have to take out. You'd be surprised how quick this sander does work, and it's pretty easy to use. I like it a lot. We'll press some settings away from its maximum speed. Let's just watch how this works. <laughs> This is done as far as 80 grit is concerned. Got one little divot that's going to stay in there. 
and then I'll finish sanding the rest of it. So you can see it makes pretty short work of it. Here's an example of some glue in the corner and the type of glue that I used when I assemble these drawers is the liquid hide glue. So different glues might have different characteristics but let's take part of this and use a scraper to try to take it off. You see it's going to tears up the grain a little bit. So that's that's going across the grain. Let's try it in this corner with the grain. It's kind of difficult to get it to start, but you can see it catches it. Now on the inside, very inside, let's see how this feign sander works. Just showing different approaches. surface that's uh, on the flat side there on the bottom is done and scraping it didn't end up being the best thing there and you can see here I made a little bit of a divot but that's fine it's inside back of a drawer so you can see with 100 grit on the Fane sander that's even better than a cabinet scraper now to be fair the cabinet scraper is kind of dull so if you had a fresh edge on a card scraper or whatever kind of scraper you've got, you might be able to get some of the glue off first and then your sanding would be easier. But I know of nothing better to get into this far corner of a drawer to get glue out than that, than that really tight orbit uh, Fane Multimaster type sander. There's probably other brands out there, but this gets in there nice. And I've got the glue off there, and now when I go back, I, this is a 100 grit, that I, that I used for this and I've got up to 320 I think I bought these many years ago but the 100 grit seems to be taking it off without doing much scratching unnecessary scratching just show you some options for sanding all right so fitting these drawers is it's just custom fitting because on something this big I don't get all the gaps and everything the same so I have a range of thickness for this spacer piece that goes in uh, on the side. Since I have a face frame, the drawer sides don't run against the case side, so you gotta put a spacer piece. So I can adjust the tension and the slide of the, of the fit uh, by the thickness of that. So I just make each one. I start off with one that's pretty thick and then work with it. There's a little bit of side to side slop in here, there's, a, there's kind of a sweet spot. If I put a little bit of weight on this, pull up on it a little bit, it slides easier. So that's okay by me. Those are all pretty good fits. Considering that there's no finish, they're sanded to 80 grit, and there's no wax on them yet. So I've got a, a good fit with each of the upper drawers, the half drawers. You can see some of these stick out more. Probably the eighth inch variance in these. This side, uh, the face frame sticks, uh, is a little wider by the time everything was trimmed. So I have to have, therefore, a thicker spacer block, which was cool. Now, on the full width drawers, you've got the drawer guides there. I'm not getting, at this point, the same um, able to push on one end and get the drawer open and close like I do on my finished ones. That part of that could be just because it's not smooth and it's not waxed in there yet, but I'm trying to determine how much slop is about right on the track. It's difficult to remove wood on this if you glue it and screw it. I really should glue it besides just screw this on and so I'll be taking these off and I'm just going to use yellow wood glue so it tears quick and then those will be set.
and it would be difficult to take apart. But I also don't want it to come apart. So I think uh, I'm going to do it like I have in the past and just go ahead and glue it. Don't know more what to say about fitting the drawers. Space wise, I end up pretty centered on these. And I'm hugging a little more, but I have an even joint line here, gap, and that's a little tighter here. But that works. So it still looks good. So I'm really in the late stages now, finish sand and start putting finish on the project.